Hi everyone and welcome to the channel where we learn, create, and share. My name is Greg and in this video we're going to be taking a look at the CloudRay K40 laser machine. I'm going to talk about some of the things that I like about this machine and honestly I'm going to cover some of the things that I really don't care for. I'm going to wrap all of that up by running a nice little sample project on the machine so we can check it out in action. Let's get started by getting familiar with the K40 style laser machine. Here's what they're all about. This is going to be one of the cheapest ways to get into a CO2 laser machine. It's going to have a 40 watt laser tube. The work area is going to be 8 inches by 12 inches. The frame is all steel and welded making for a very strong and durable framework to last many, many years. Years ago, there was only one or two versions of a K40 machine, but in today's competitive laser market, there are a lot of variations to this machine. CloudRay builds upon the basic K40 machine by using a high quality laser tube. The work area has a cast aluminum bed with a removable tray for the built-in clamp system. There's top-notch machined aluminum brackets with a really nice gold anodized finish. Linear rails throughout for precision control of the laser head. The CloudRay machine includes a really good air assist pump, an off-axis air nozzle, a high-flowing exhaust fan, looks a little odd but it works really well. I'll provide a link down below if you'd like to know more details about the CloudRay K40 machine. This brings us to what I like about the machine. CloudRay uses really good components on their machines and the laser tube on this K40 is no different being very high quality. The cast aluminum work area is really nice. The overall fit and finish of the entire machine is really nice and it goes even further when we take a look back inside of the machine with those gold anodized brackets. The brackets are some of the nicest that I've ever seen on a K40 machine. The adjustable bed height is easy to set the laser focus. I actually like the exposed mirrors and focusing lens on the machine. They're very easy to get to and clean even while they're still installed on the machine. Now it's time to talk about things that I don't like, starting out with the control panel on the machine. This is a little bit outdated and it's used to run the software, which we're going to talk about the software in just a little bit. But since I've got the lid open, this brings up the second point in that the machine doesn't have a safety switch for the lid. This means I could be running a project and, well, anybody could open the lid of the machine while it's running and the machine will continue to run. And now looping back to the software I think the software is outdated. It matches the outdated control panel on the machine. In fact, when we look at the free software that comes with the K40 machine, it comes on a CD disc. Now, I don't know about you, but the last several computers I purchased don't have a CD drive on them. I had to dig out an older computer and copy all the files over to the computer. And when you take a look at the free software that comes with the machine, there's actually going to be two software programs I need to run in order to uh, connect up to the machine and create projects to send out to the machine. Personally, I don't like using the, all of that software just to do something that should be done in one software package. I did, however, install the LaserDraw software because there is a USB driver that is needed for connecting the computer up to the machine, of course, and I chose to use a free software program called Meerkat, and it's gonna use that installed USB driver to connect up to the machine. 
We're gonna check out Meerkat in just a few minutes. And by the way, I'm not uh, affiliated with Meerkat uh, in any way. In fact, Meerkat is a free open source software, somebody that's really good in programming machines and likes laser machines, took it upon himself to write a very easy and intuitive software to get the most out of your K40 machine. So after talking about the things that I dislike about the machine, we might be asking ourselves, is a K40 machine still relevant today? And I have to say, yes, it's still one of the cheapest ways to get into a CO2 laser machine. And if I ever decide to get a larger CO2 machine, I can take everything that I learned from this machine and apply it towards that larger machine. The other really neat thing about a CO2 laser machine is it's great for working with acrylics. I can choose any color I want, including blue or even clear. The CO2 laser is going to be able to easily engrave or cut any of the cast acrylic materials. I'm also going to be able to very easily work with glass. See, a CO2 laser is going to see clear glass as opaque. So when I go to engrave glass, I don't have to do anything special to the surface like I would with a laser diode. I can just take a sheet of clear glass, place it in the machine, and start engraving on it right away. And by the way, I can do that at very high speeds at very low power because that glass takes the engraving effect so well and easily. Well, I don't know about you, but I think I've talked enough about the machine and it's now time to jump into the computer and make a project using the Meerkat software. By the way, I'll have a link to that software for you down below. So with that, let's jump into the computer, make a quick project and see the K40 machine in action. A quick tour of Meerkat software along the left hand side. I'm going to have all of my typical drawing tools. Across the bottom, I'm going to have the different colors that I can assign to cut layers or engraving layers. Across the top, I'm going to have a bunch of basic functions for the machine itself. And on the right hand side, I'm going to have detailed information for the laser itself. I can click the next tab and go over to jogging the laser head around on the machine. I also have route planning and optimization. I typically don't do anything with that. That's, I think, primarily if you're doing a large batch job and you want to get the most throughput on your machine as possible. There's some tools in there for you to use. I leave them as default. I don't interact with them. And I make some pretty cool projects on this machine just fine. The software has a very nice and neat clean layout and everything is very intuitive. Let's get started on this first project. I'm going to go over to File and Import File to get the first graphic loaded in. And I've got a dragon picked out and it fills up the entire workspace. The work material for today, though, is going to be this piece of basswood. It is about an eighth of an inch thick and it is going to measure about 70 inches uh, tall by 180, well, millimeters, 180 millimeters wide. So all I have to do to resize this is just highlight the graphic and grab one of the corners and I get a live readout of the size of the graphic and I'm actually going to go down to about 60 millimeters. That looks good. I'll put that right about in the middle. And when this imported, it automatically assigned the graphic to an engraving layer. In fact, let's check that out right now. The speed is set at 175 millimeters per second and the power, we're gonna be setting the power within the software and not from the control panel. That's why we saw the control panel that was set at 99% or essentially 100%. Now the power scaling is per thousand. So if I wanna run at 50%, I would enter in 500, but I think I actually wanna run at about 35%. In fact, when I click somewhere else, it'll tell me the actual power percentage out. It's gonna tell me the DPI at 300, which is great. Overscan, I can type in any number that I want here. I like to have five millimeters of overscan and I can do bi-directional or unidirectional for that engraving direction. 
and this all looks good. And for the cutout, I am going to draw, I think maybe an oval around the dragon. And once I've got that, I can shift this around, maybe bring this side in a little bit, definitely bring this right side in, maybe make it a little bit taller. And I think overall I want to make everything just a tad bit smaller. Bring that down to right about there. That looks good. Now I'd also put that oval on an engraving layer and I don't want that. So we're going to click down here on C1 for it to be assigned to a cut layer. And now when I double click on that, we can see I've got a speed assigned at uh, 12 millimeters per second. I think I'll try eight and I'm going to run at 65% power. And I can enable the passes and I'm going to be running two passes with this. And this all looks good. So all I need to do from here is get the, the blank loaded up into the machine, set the focus, turn the exhaust on, and we'll show you how to get the project from Meerkat sent out to the laser machine. And using the included focusing gauge with the machine, I can use the hand knob to raise and lower the work bed to get the perfect focus. This gauge, by the way, goes to the top of this gold colored bracket. I'll adjust it down just a little bit. Having this tool bed that moves up and down to get the focus set is definitely a pretty nice feature. With all of that set up, I can go back over to the laser tab and I can click on the outline. And this is going to essentially frame out the, the project area. And I can watch the red guide laser on the laser head to make sure that it's always over the work material. Turn on now to actually send the project out to the laser machine. I have to do a two-step process here. I have to click arm. So that is going to get it set up. And then once I click start, that is gonna send the program out to the laser machine and we'll get cracking on our little fun sample project. That didn't take very long at all. And let's see how this turned out. Cut clean through and let's check this out with some detail. This looks really nice. All the engraving turned out perfect. I don't think that there's a scan line out of place. I've got a lot of really nice detail. The cut turned out really nice. There is a little bit of charring that I'm seeing. And I think that's mainly due to my part that I didn't optimize the cut settings. I'm still working with the machine, still having a lot of fun with it, still learning the perfect settings, but we're tossing some settings out here and creating a fun little project. This looks pretty cool. That was a lot of fun creating that project in the Meerkat software and then seeing the K40 laser machine in action. Join me in future videos where I'll be doing some acrylic projects and some glass engraving using the K40 machine. Now don't forget to show this video some love by giving it a like or subscribing to the laser channel. Not only is it a great way to help the channel grow, but it's an awesome way to connect video content like this with other great viewers just like you. Well, until we meet again in the next video, learn, create, and share.